What's up, friends? Today, we're taking another look at Pat McGrath Lab's newest eyeshadow palette, Mothership Release, Mothership 5 in Braun Seduction. If you want to see my full, extensive first impressions fan girl video, I will leave that card up above and video link down below. I also have a Pat McGrath playlist where I review all her eyeshadow palettes, swatch them, even compare them with the smaller motherships to the big motherships, doing different looks with them. So definitely check that out and just binge on Pat McGrath videos all day. Many of you had wanted me to come back on here and do another look using different shadow combinations. And I also wanted to share my thoughts of observations I encountered using this palette. I was running into trouble with the topper shades and using them again and using the feedback that you had provided. I just wanted to update you on new application techniques and solutions to the problems I ran into in my first video. Without further ado, if you want to see another look using Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction, then please keep on watching. I wanted to quickly show you my most recent purchase from Ofer Cosmetics. This is their Boho palette and I purchased this over the Labor Day weekend sale. It was 40% off and I have been loving it. Of course, I will leave timestamps down below to jump over to the section you want to see when this demo will start. I have this bronzer on as well as these two blushes. I have been loving the application, the tone of these shades. I still have to get into the eyeshadows, but I've been mostly using the face products. In addition to the Rodeo Drive highlighter and the Blissful highlighter, I've been really feeling the layout of this palette. And if you want a more in-depth review with swatches and a demo on camera, then let me know down below. Today's look, I want to use primarily, okay. Hold on, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. I used Extreme Aubergine yesterday, primarily in my crease, and I blended it out with Entrapment. But I feel like I'm gonna go in with, I keep wanting to say Dishonest. That is not the name of the shade. Disobedient. I wanna do Disobedient today, majority of that on my crease, but I don't know, I still wanna use extreme aubergine all over, but we'll see. I'm gonna take it a step at a time. Uh, Liz already prepped with the Born This Way from Too Faced Super Sculpting Concealer. And I did set it today with a little bit of powder just so I could kind of gauge the difference between that and a sticky base. I am seriously contemplating getting more Wayne Goss brushes. I also am looking into Sonia G brushes. They're intriguing. I know Susan Mayfield on here, hey girl, was saying she has some of them and she has has been loving them. Aesthetically, I prefer the brush handle on the Wayne Goss brushes, but if you have been using Sonia G and you've been loving her face and eye brushes, let me know down below. I also welcome any recommendations. I think today I'm going to start off with Disobedient and we'll go in with that shade using a Wade number four. And I appreciate the love you guys expressed in my first Mothership 5 video. I really appreciate your understanding because I love Pat McGrath and I know I'm totally biased and a lot of people feel her shadows are just overpriced and overhyped. They absolutely are. Have you seen her marketing campaigns? But again, I'm a fan of her vision and I just love what she's doing. And I truly feel a lot of these finishes are unlike anything I've seen from other brands. The only other brand I could think of right now is NARS when they have like their really sparkly shadows, but I don't know, there's just something about Pat and the shades that she creates and of course the finishes that just put her in a league all on her own. Could totally be hallucinating, but that's what I feel. I'm just keeping Disobedient in the crease because I'm later going to blend this out with entrapment. And I think it's a more successful application when applied on a powdered lid as opposed to just a set crease one. Just feel you get a smoother application. And also, these are very pigmented and I, I know a lot of people feel if they powder their lids, it's gonna take away some of the saturation from the shadow. For instance, off the top of my head, I think the shadows from Emily Edit Palettes from Makeup Revolution, they're a great matte to apply on a just set concealer without powder because you can really build them up and they won't appear patchy. These from Pat's have a lot of color to them and I don't think 
you will water it down by applying them on a powdered lid. All right, so we got that set up. I'll take now my Wayne number three. It's the bigger crease brush. And now with entrapment, we're just going to graze that over top of disobedient and start to blend that out. I think today, because the lighting is better, entrapment appears now I feel warmer on camera. My first review video, I was so pissed. I was editing the footage and I was just like, oh, I look so gray. Why do the colors look so freaking gray? And now it's a lot better today, I feel like. They're showing truer to what they appear in the pan. I think that is absolutely gorgeous. Stunning, just stunning. Entrapment is such a pretty shade. Look at that. I think that's so gorgeous. Who on here watches American Horror Story? Season 10's first episode premiered last night on FX. It was a lot. Dealing with a lot of themes I just didn't see coming, but that was stupid because it is apocalypse, so a lot of different things could happen within that category. I was not ready for that opening scene, man. That was really intense. And what followed through, it was like, Ooh, it was a lot. Making you question, like, if I was in that situation, like, how would I react and what would I say? What would I do? It's crazy. Let me know down below if you're an American Horror Story fan. My favorite season is one because I was not expecting that. I saw the marketing posters and it's like, what could it be? Like, what can we possibly be? Like, what is this new show? Like, what is it going to entail? What is, what is that? And man, you get into the season and it's like, they went there. Horror done really well for television, I feel. I like horror movies, but they scare me so much. I recently saw Hereditary. You guys, I couldn't sleep well for three days. And it was more because of the disturbing material in that movie and just the themes they touched on. It was a lot. And then of course, coupled with all the ghost stories that I heard that happened in real life, I was like, oh, I don't want to turn off the lights. Of course, it, you know, it's all okay. But man, oh man, I'm really excited about American Horror Story season 10. It looks promising from last night's episode. So we shall see. I think we're doing good. I feel like I want to take I guess that's one thing I wish I had in this palette just so I don't have to reach out a matte beige shade just to blend out with but usually if I do need something like that I'll just go into the loose powder that I have on standby taking my Sigma E40 brush just with some loose powder and I want to clean up the edges just far up here close to my brow I feel I just need to smooth this out a little more. I love how this looks. I, I definitely like it better now, again, because I feel the lighting is better and I could see entrapment in its, how it's supposed to look on camera. And I feel you guys can see that as well. Do we want to take, yes, I think I'm gonna do that. Using my Morphe M514, now with Extreme Aubergine. I like my nails today, finally got them done. They're, it's like that magnetic polish that when you hold a magnetic tool over your nail, it shifts the pigments. But I found that you have to kind of let it dry because when you apply the top coat, it moves the pigment around and then it loses that design that initially was created with the magnetic tool. So I kind of have to play with that, but I love the constant change in shade. <laughs> Extreme Aubergine. Now I'm gonna take that to the outer V. <laughs> and that gets it smoky very fast. What I observed yesterday when just primarily applying this shade into my crease like we did with Disobedient today, it does show purple, but it's very dark because I think think it has like a black base so when you blend it out although when you see it closely it's like not really black you can see there's like a hint of color there it's still not gonna look exclusively purple-ish because even here I'm not sure if you can tell on camera I can tell in person in front of my mirror it still has that hint of deep eggplant that I feel still is present even after blending it out. And I think overall as a nice character to the smoky eyes, so it's not just black on brown, 
you have a little bit of character to the eye. It does not rely on that typical neutral shade to create depth with. I'm careful to not go crazy with it because I don't wanna pull it up too high. And I also don't wanna go crazy here on the outer corner. I feel like I need to use a smaller brush, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep using this brush. I like Morphe brushes, but once you use Wayne Goss brushes, it's really hard to go back. And you can just see, like, and I washed both these brushes. Both of them, like the bristles, of course, start to separate, but I just feel it separates less on a Wayne versus on a Morphe. Like a lot of the bristles are just like, <laughs> they, they spread out a lot and I think it just kind of, it makes you lose control while you're blending. So although I love the size of it, I wish the bristles didn't separate as much and just held more together. That's why I'm considering getting like a smaller Wayne Goss crease brush. I don't wanna get the eye set because I feel like I have three out of the brushes that are sold in the eye set, but there are two in there that have a smaller brush head that I feel will be perfect for this purpose. Take one number four and just kind of help smooth this out a little bit more. Do I wanna go into my lower lash line now? I'm taking now my Wayne Goss number six with Entrapment, the Adobe Coral shade. I'm gonna run that just on my lower right now because I'm gonna start blowing that down a bit. And now without anything else, you could really see the true color of the shade I feel. And I feel with the light, you can still tell Extreme Aubergine it still has a purple uh, tinge to it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna bring it down low, actually. And then add Disobedient to just create a little more depth. I'm gonna take my Morphe E36 with Disobedient and just carefully right under the outer and inner portion of my lower lash line create a little more intensity. I'm using the smaller brush to have a little bit of control so that it doesn't go too low. You're more than welcome to blow down this color as much as you like if you want a little more uh, dimension to the eye, but I just wanted to keep it right under the lash line so it doesn't get too nuts. Ooh, how are we looking? I think this looks great so far. We're doing good. I would love to go in with, what is this shade? It is Bronze Blaze today. I haven't tried that on my lid yet. So here's the thing. I think a lot of you had suggested that I apply this on a wet brush. So that's what I'm gonna do if I could freaking find it. Where is my shader brush? There it is, oh, thank goodness. Taking my, one of my favorites, the Zoeva 234, then going in with Bronze Blaze. So I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it has a lot of texture to it, so that's why it is recommended that you wet it. Some of you also suggested glitter glue. Now, I mistakenly forgot to bring it with me for this video, so it's nearby. I will still love to just see what this does on a wet brush. I'm carefully pressing it in and not sweeping it on because sweeping it on will definitely cause the particles to fall under your eye. Ooh, that's pretty. I wanna see what that does with a finger application. If I could use the warmth of my finger to kind of press the pigment more onto my lid so it has a little more stick. Or you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take it on my finger, but I'm going to wet my finger, see if that is a better approach. Oh, I think that is, friends. Oh, I think that's a lot better to do than use a brush because you could just use the warmth from your fingertip to help it better stick and smooth out. I'm doing this with my left hand and it's so strange. Like, <laughs> I'm actually gonna take my, this is, it's my Ray Ray BH Cosmetics pencil brush from her brush set with Extreme Aubergine and I'm carefully just grazing the edges of the bronze shade so that 
there's a smoother transition between metallic and matte. And I'm also putting more towards the inner portion of my lid so that there's shadow there and it doesn't look like a blank space. Sometimes you just need a smaller brush to do that with. Okay, with these topper shades, namely the ones here, Astro Luna Gold and VR Fire Opal, I found the best way to apply these shades. Yes, you could also apply them on a glitter base. Here's the deal. If you want them to appear opaque, because I feel these are originally designed to just use as topper types of shades, then you would apply it on a glitter base. I find if you are applying one of these shades on top of a shade that's already on your lid, adding glitter onto the shadow, I feel it's just gonna create chunk and texture on the lid. That's why, because we already have the blaze, what is this called? Since we already have bronze blaze on the lid, I will just lightly tap just once, and that already puts enough on our fingertip, and with the very light pressing motion, place it on the shadow. And I think that offers enough glitz that it stays on the lid and it doesn't get all over the face. Inevitably though, I still got some on my, you know what, but it's cool. It's cool, man. I'm not gonna get stressed about it. It's very hard to see on camera, but I find these topper shades, each particle has its own disco ball. That's how I feel. It has its own light party. It's so hard to pick up on camera when you see what these shades can do in person, it will blow your mind. I've never encountered a shadow finish quite like this. And of course, if you were to put this under a harder, more intense light, you can see the glitz and the gleam just in action from these topper shades. I think they're gorgeous. And it added a little bit of like a green type of character to it. Just for funsies, I'm gonna go in with a different color on my other lid. So again, we're just gonna press once, and that's gonna put more than enough on our fig. Oh, excuse me. I'm gonna press carefully onto the blaze shade. And there you go. Oh, that really pumped up the bronze there. I'm actually gonna go in on the other side too. Now we're doubling it up. Why not? I'm just gonna put a little bit of fire opal. <laughs> just keep on layering, Alicia. I think initially when I first did my first impressions video, it was glittery and I think because since I used this shade, I wasn't crazy about what it was doing. But now I better understand how to apply these shades and just appreciate what they're meant to do. They do create a gradient of sparkle on the lid and I think it's really gorgeous in person. On camera it might look like whatever, but I really love the effect it gives. As for the lower lash line, huh, I think I wanna go in with guilty pleasure to the center of my lower lash line. I'm gonna take the same Ray Ray and BH Cosmetics brush, but now definitely gonna wet that and punch that right to the center. This is like the topier shade in the palette. It's gorgeous. It's, it's a nice opportunity to go cooler with the mattes if you don't wanna go goldy bronze with them. And I think I also wanna go in, again, one press, with Fire Opal on top of Guilty Pleasure. Ooh, that's pretty. I love what that did. Look how crazy that looks. Love it. All right, friends, let's just put on some mascara. I have to go back to using my Grande Lash. I stopped using it because this was back in April. And during that time, my allergies were killing me. And usually one of the symptoms that I experienced during that time is my, it's just itchy eyes and my lash line can get really irritated and sensitive anytime I, you know, take my mascara off. I just feel the need to like scratch my eyeballs out. That's why I avoided applying Grande Lash for quite some time because I felt like every night my eyelids and lash line were just so freaking itchy. And I would just, you know, itch off 
the serum which didn't make much sense i feel like when i was using it my lashes looked a lot more lush i even considered getting extensions again i was looking at old photos of me with my lash extensions and at the time i felt when i applied eyeshadow that it was hard to see them but not really like you saw those suckers still and i was like oh man that looked good you know, the thing with lash extensions, though, is if you start all over, you got to pay for like a new set. So that's like over $100. Then you have to go in for a fill. And if you don't go in within a certain time frame, then they consider it more expensive because they have to apply more lashes. So you have to be on top of that scheduling because one day out of the two week period that they recommend that you come in during for a refill for a, a lower price. If it's a day after, they're going to charge you more and they're not going to have any of it. It's like, okay, okay, got you, I got you. So there's that, but oh man, they looked so good. And you know, these are okay now, but I think when I start using my Grande Lash again, maybe I'll see more of a difference. I feel that serum helped me in the most positive, great way to help rehab my lashes back to health to their full <laughs> hello why did you do that to their full length and volume because my poor little lashes were looking brittle after i got my extensions removed and i just bought a crap ton of sephora eye makeup remover which has oil in it which is also not recommended that you use on extensions when you're removing your eye makeup so i don't know man i was just thinking about it but we'll see i'll see if i change my mind i also wanted to go in with skin fetish the highlighter trio so i don't have any highlighter on at the moment we go in with fine gold first and then using my sigma f35 brush because i want to show you how i applied my highlighter yesterday using the fire opal shade oh my god i'm telling you it's a lot but i think it looked gorgeous i'm taking the same brush now with the fire opal shade i want to keep it high i don't want to bring it too low and i'm just pressing it right to the highest point of my cheekbone oh my god and look it matches my earring see that ooh, ooh. The same reflect effect this gives is the same reflect effect for my iridescent earrings. <laughs> I love it. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. And also, Chad, one of our fan members, suggested that we use Divine Glow as a highlighter. And I think it's also a gorgeous shade to use on your face. But I've been really feeling the alternate highlighter colors lately. And I've been using those on my cheekbones instead of the traditional like champagne -y gold shades i'm gonna take my bh cosmetics and ray ray brush again but do i even have it nope that's a lie i'm gonna take my morphe brush and just carefully buff around the edges not so much on the highlighter because i want that point of highlight to stay saturated i'm just going around the edges so it could appear more smoother and seamless with those transitions look at that Oh my god, so pretty. I would love to go in with Rose Gold 005 with that same Morphe brush just here on the top. Now this has a little more glitz than I would like to have on my cheekbones. I just wanted to try it out. I'm just going to take my Smashbox buildable cheek and just further buff that into the skin but i think it has a nice punch of rose i have to make sure i buff it in because i don't want it to just sit on my skin and enhance my texture for the inner corner let me see let me do my brow bone first i'm going back with my ray ray bh cosmetics brush with divine glow placing that right under the arch of my brow and i think i want to go in with rose gold again but i'm going to wet my pinky so i'm taking rose gold 005 i'm going to wet my pinky and place that onto the inner corner oh okay Ooh, that's pretty i like that i'm going with divine glow just along the edges of rose gold to kind of blend it out a little bit so it has more of a seamless gradient here on this 
part of my inner lid. And with that same pencil brush, I'm popping astral gold just to the center of all of that. So there's like a nice pop of sparkle coming from the most inner part of the corner. And of course, I gotta try to take out my mistake I did with my mascara. So I'm gonna take any pencil brush will do. I'm actually gonna take some aubergine and just graze over that shadow mascara portion. Hopefully kind of blend it in, but it's not going anywhere. Probably because it was still wet, Alicia. Good job. I'm gonna go in with my Ofra Cosme, oh, Ofra, Ofra Long Lasting Liquid Lip in the shade Verona. Taking a little bit of my Christine Leanne and Urban Decay Comfort Matte in Bun Bun. Dash to the center. And then take my, what is this, where'd it go? I'm gonna take my ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in Snow Day over the top. And that's the finished look. What do you think, friends? How do you like this other look we came out with from Mothership 5 Bronze Deduction? I've been loving this palette. I think the colors are extraordinary. I understand a lot of people feel that, yes, this is uh, overhyped. Like, what's the big deal? $125 for shades that I already own. It's more so experiencing Pat McGrath's curation and take on these shades. Yes, Juvia's Place is gonna have their version. Color Rain's gonna have their version. Color Pop's gonna have their version. Make a Forever, Bobbi Brown, Hourglass. Like, they're all gonna have their version of these shades. I find that these two right here, they create such an immaculate finish on the shadow that, again, I have not encountered elsewhere. I feel like she's using something that's even more sparkly than glitter. Those hardwired shadows from NARS are just pressed creamy glitter that are apparently very easy to apply. I don't know, man. I feel like her Pat's topper shades are just gorgeous and just have more light radiating from the particles. It could be me and my imagination. And yes, I am biased because I freaking love Pat and everything that she freaking does. I'm just gonna put on more mascara because I feel like I need a little more. I actually really love the mattes. I think they blend very beautifully. And let's just say we could agree that I feel they work better on a powdered lid. And I don't think the loose powder is gonna take away from their pigmentation and you will build up a beautiful color. Listen, if you're not a makeup enthusiast and you feel that still these colors are not worth 125, then don't get the palette. Don't feel pressured by my fangirling to get this palette. Again, I love coming on here because I love makeup and I love sharing my passion with you guys. And yes, it is fun to connect with others who have the same passion and the same admiration for a lot of these brands and artists. I particularly love Pat McGrath because she is a makeup artist and has been in the game for quite some time and just from I'm sure everything she's encountered in life, in runway shows, in photo shoots, and for her to have an opportunity to create her own makeup line, what she thinks a uh, matte brown should be and how should it perform and what she would like to see from a topper shadow and the different effects that it can deliver. I wanna be a part of that and you don't have to. Maybe you just wanna see how it works without having to buy it if, you want to see how the other mattes work and the other metallic shades work still you don't have to get this if you do have it and you want to figure out different ways and how to use it then yes all in all i am thrilled that i purchased this palette i was very excited to receive it and definitely my excitement aligns with what i experienced from this palette using it for the last three days I still want to come on here or let me know if you still want me to come on here and film another look for you guys. I would love to do a video about all the Pat McGrath palettes and which one is the best one for you. I would like to break down each palette, my thoughts on them, what I think, what purpose they serve, better serve in terms of lifestyle and background and color story. Let me know if you want to see that video. I'll be more than happy to do it so we can all figure out together what Pat McGrath palette is best for us. And that, my friends, 
is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another Get Ready With Me chit chat video, tutorial, demo, or review. Take care and I'll see you again soon.